Good morning, everybody. Today is Sunday, the 15th of May, and I'm delighted that you're with me and with those who are helping me out today for Rogation Sunday. I'm here outside in the graveyard in St. Shocknell's Church in Dunshockland. As it's Rogation Sunday, it's a Sunday where we would normally travel the boundaries of the parish traditionally, praying and thanking God for planting the seeds and everything that we will harvest next October. We can't do that today. However, we can do it virtually and thank God for all the blessings in our lives. Enjoy today's service. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Good morning and welcome again into my home as we celebrate today morning prayer on the sixth Sunday after Easter. You can find the service on page 101 in your prayer books. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving to confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit, we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our first canticle is Vanity. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it, his hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the wilderness when your forebears tested me, put me to the proof though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed that generation and said, it is a people who err in their hearts for they do not know my ways, of whom I swear in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, beginning at verse 22. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar 
with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and it does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not very far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 66, beginning at verse 7. Bless our God, you peoples. May the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and my praise was on my tongue. If I found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer nor withheld his love from me. Amen. This reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 13 to 22. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. 
In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and, and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. Here endeth the lesson. The Second Canticle, the Tedium, Part 3 Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, forever. Amen.
Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 15. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be with you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Amen. We now say the Canticle Benedictus on page 107. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people to set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of the servant David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to his father Abraham to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give his people knowledge of salvation for the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. When we think of an advocate, what do we think? We can think of somebody who will stand up for us in the worst moments, who will be a friend to us, who will advise us, who will guide us. All of those things are advocacy, mentorship, friendship. When Jesus spoke to the disciples 2,000 years ago, they were losing him for the second time. Can you just imagine what that was like? Not only were they heartbroken on Good Friday when they saw him die on the cross, only to be risen again on Easter Day and reappear to them. But now they're having to deal with losing him for a second time. How heartbroken could they be? But yet, Jesus left them and us the gift that gives for all of our lives and will for all of eternity. The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit with us, to inspire us and to be with us. That Holy Spirit is with us today. That Holy Spirit was with us the day we were born. And that Holy Spirit will be with us the day we take our last breath. And the same Holy Spirit will be with us as we see God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit as they truly are in our eternal home to join all of those who have gone before us. That is some gift. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us this gift beyond words beyond explanation and beyond description. The Holy Spirit can do so much in our lives. It can bring people to us 
that we would never have known before. It can challenge us, yes, into doing new and different ways of ministry, like what we're experiencing this morning. But with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus and with God at our sides, how can we be troubled or worried? We have the answer to everything in them, in our trust and love for them and for one another. Amen. We now confirm our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed on page 112. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We now say the prayer that Jesus gave us himself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Sixth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness. You brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue our prayers with the Collects at Morning Prayer. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life we may never forget your presence but may remember that we are always walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with our prayers. Lord Jesus, you have promised to be with us forever. Teach us to rejoice in your presence. Free us from all anxiety. Help us to know you are always at hand, that we may work with you and to your glory. Through our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. 
Amen. Lord, in you we live and move and have our being. We are your children and you are not far from any one of us. We pray for Christians who are struggling in lonely or difficult places. And we pray that we with them may know that we dwell in you and you in us. We give thanks for our health service and key workers who are putting their lives at risk for our care so that we can be safe. We pray for families who cannot be with their loved ones in their darkest hour. We pray for the doctors and nurses who care and comfort for all who are sick and dying. Lord, if we abide in you and you are in us, we are already in the fullness of that life which is eternal. We rejoice in your presence and pray for loved ones and friends who have gone before us. We pray for all who are gravely ill with COVID-19. Lord, you abide in us. May we know we abide in you. Amen.
as I bring this service of morning prayer to a conclusion, I'd like to thank everybody who took part. To Reverend Allison, to Joanna, to Valerie, to Jesmond, to Alec and Andrew. It really was a combined and community effort. Thank you, you, for tuning in and spending this 30 minutes with us. And thank you, God, for sending your Holy Spirit to each and every one of us so that we could mark this Rogation Sunday together in our own ways, in our own time. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. May God bless you, keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Amen.